Hey, this is Jessica. Today I'm going to be creating a project using the Mixed Media Inspired July 2019 subscription kit. So I'm going to be working in my Gina Weekly Media regular size journal. I've already gessoed the watercolor rag paper and now I'm applying some carnation and white heavy body paint by Dina Wakely. Then I'm just going to brush it on. I'm sort of mixing the two colors as I put it on here. I'm looking for an uneven layer. Some of it's going to be pure white, some of it's going to be the pink, some of it's going to be blended. And I didn't quite have enough paint so I'm just adding a little bit more. And then I am going to get my brush wet in a second here so that I can spread the paint a little bit easier. As you can see it's wet now so it's wanting to blend more. And I'm just going to keep going until I'm happy that everything is evenly blended and the paper is all covered. Look, not looking for anything perfect, just coating everything with paint. And now the first step I'm going to do after this is dry is I'm going to start putting layers on with the 3x4 gel press plate. I'm applying the paint directly to the gel plate. I could have also put it onto my craft mat and then brayered it on, but this I'm looking for a smushy print, nothing too perfect, so this works great for what I'm trying to achieve. So using my brayer here, I'm just very lightly blending the paint together to kind of start to create a pattern. And I'm going to push it down directly to the page. And as you can see, I accidentally left a little piece there on the top. I didn't push down, so I'm just going to patch it. It's not perfect, but that's okay. I didn't want it to be. Because I have so much paint left on the gel plate, I did grab my Ons and Ends journal, and I'm making a print in there as well with all the extra paint. And now I'm going to apply my second layer. The first color I'm applying is sky, and um, more more of carnation. I also didn't clean off my brayer, so there's some extra paint from the re first print too. I'm going to overlay up the gel plate with what I did for my first layer, and then I'm having it down some. And I also dropped it, but whatever. It's not going to matter later, so I'm not going to worry about it. Again, the extra paint is going to go in my odds and ends journal. There's no sense wasting. I'm just creating a cool pattern in there for later. Now as you can see on the plate there are little bits of paint left. I don't worry about it because it's all staying in my color family here so if some of the paint from the previous prints gets into my next print, bonus color. That's what I'm looking for. So here I applied a little bit of Peacock and Fuchsia the gel plate and I'm going to brayer it out. You don't want to press too hard as it'll push all the paint right off the gel plate. I'm taking care to overlap each one of these rectangles so that there's a little bit of connection of pattern here. Making sure I push down really good before I lift it. And then again the extra paint goes into my odds and ends journal. And this is going to be my final print for today. So I'm going to do back, go back to my original colors of the background with a little bit of carnation and white. I didn't really like how the middle print, the up and down rectangle turned out, so I'm just going to layer this over the top of it to try to fix it up a little bit. So I'm making sure that everything is pushed down really firmly so that I get a good transfer from the gel plate. So now I'm going to, again, take the extra paint from the gel plate and put it in my odds and ends journal. Now 
in this set of collage works from Dean Weekly Media, there are 10 different um, patterns or quotes, and they have them in both black and white. But once you take them out of this package, it is nearly impossible to get them all back in there. So I just suggest keeping them in a, some kind of resealable zip bag, and that way you can get in and out easy. I chose this quote, you are sensitive and that's okay, and I'm going to tint it with some watered down paint. Here I'm using Heather, and I just sprayed, down, sprayed a bunch of water in there to water it down, and now I'm painting that on both sides of the tissue. And just be a little bit careful when you do this because as you add water to the tissue it does become a lot more susceptible to tearing and ripping so just be gentle with it and now I'm adding a little bit of blackberry so I have a few different tones and I'm just carefully putting that all over the back and now after it's dry I'm going to trim away the extra paper around the quote and I cut it off at first and I didn't like that that was a clean line so now I'm using my a clean brush that with just water on it to get the edge of the tissue wet and then I'm tearing it away with my finger so that there's an uneven edge all the way around the quote. Then I find that getting it wet I'm able to control the tear a little bit more. Well if it was just dry and I tore it could very easily tear into the word and I didn't want that to happen. So having it wet it just gently will pull apart. And if that doesn't work for you, just put a little more water and let it sit there a little bit longer and it should tear and fray really nicely for you. And now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to put a layer of gel medium. And gel medium is perfect for things like tissue and newspaper and very, very lightweight materials because it will also help with the things that are semi-transparent like vellum and help it kind of disappear into the page. So you always want to put a layer down first, then put your um, paper, in this case the collage words, and then when that is smoothed out completely you're going to want to take your finger and put another layer over the top of the tissue. So here I'm just smoothing out the wrinkles so it's smooth on my page. If you like texture and wrinkles then you don't have to do that step, but I like things to be smooth. And now I'm putting a layer of the collage medium over the top and rubbing it in with my finger so that it soaks into the collage word tissue and makes it sort of disappear. Here I'm going to be using um, blending foam on the mini blending tool and I'm going in with Heather paint. This is all Dean Wickley Media paint and Blackberry. And I'm using this on the same blending tool and then I'm going to use my fingers in between to blend it out. And this, I should have mentioned, this stencil is part of the Mixed Media Inspired July 2019 kit. It is called Large Funky Silhouette. And so I'm trying to create a gradient here with this stencil. So you can see it's lighter on top and darker on the bottom. And I'm going to be doing the same thing again, now using carnation and fuchsia. Or, I'm sorry, I think this actually is magenta, not fuchsia. Yes, magenta. And I'm, again, blending it out with my fingers. And I got a little bit of the carnation paint on my finger to help make it a little bit of a softer transition. So I'm going to also be making a print using this mask from the same stencil set. And so I'm putting paint on the back because I want all the bodies to be facing the same way. So on the back side I'm just putting squirts of different paint. These are all the same paints we used when we were doing the gel prints earlier. So I'm having the continuity of color throughout the page. And now I'm just going to spread it with my finger. And I'm being careful not to over mix, just slightly pulling the colors into each other so that 
they blending but yet it you can still see that there are different areas of color so I am doing this very carefully but I am I'm going around and making sure that the paint goes all the way to the edges of the stencil and I'm doing also pressing very lightly with my finger to not over blend and after I have it all smoothed out and just put two squirts of water with my water bottle to help with the transfer and now I'm going to use my brayer again to make sure that there's good even pressure along the entirety of the mask and this also makes sure that if I did this with my fingers I could accidentally push or make it slide so I, I always like to use a brayer and now I'm just gonna get off that extra paint to the side there and lift the mask and voila there you are now because there is a lot of paint left on that mask I'm gonna do a secondary print or what's called a ghost print again using my brayer to make sure that the mask has firm even contact with the paper and I actually like that ghost print even better than the original so much so that I ended up deciding to use the ghost print I'll save that original print but the full color for another project. And now what I'm going to do is using my scissors here I'm just going to roughly cut this out not going perfectly to the edge I'm leaving a little white along the outside I apologize if you can hear a dog barking in the background. Um, the dog is outside barking at a squirrel in the trees. Okay, so now that I got this all cut out, I'm going to put a little bit of the Aztec black and white patterned washi tape here. And I'm laying the mask on the paper so I can see where it's going where I kind of want it to go, laying it out on my page, and then making sure that the washi tape sticks out to the right side of the body there. And I'm tearing some of the strips in half so I have not perfect strips of tape. And I'm laying them out here and just seeing what I like. I do not like that little piece, so I'm going to pull that off and use this bigger strip here. And now that I'm happy with it, I can move forward. So as you can see, I have a length of both the green and the blue DMC embroidery floss and I'm it's six stranded embroidery floss so what I'm doing here is kind of pulling it apart trying to make it look a little bit less perfect you know if the strands kind of frayed a little bit I, that I'm looking for something that isn't exact here so and I did end up separating it so that it was a three strand or three strand piece and then I'm just again continuing to pull it apart so it gets even more and more distressed look looking here My original plan was to use both the blue and the green layered behind the 
mask cut out, but I ended up not liking the green color. So I got rid of the green for now. I'll use that on another project. So now I'm going to glue this all down with the Dino Wakely Media Ultra Thick Gel. And this is a great adhesive glue for um, different kinds of fabric, heavyweight papers, basically anything it'll glue. So I really like to use it in my Dino Wakely Media journal because of all the different um, substrates and fabrics in it. It works great on all of them. And in this case, it works also works great for gluing down my embroidery floss. So now I'm also going to put a layer of the ultra thick gel on the back of my mask cutout. You could use a brush, but I just like to use my finger as it's a really easy tool to clean up with a baby wipe. I mean, it's hard to get glue out of brush bristles, so I am just using my finger to spread this. move it around a bit because I kind of can't remember where I originally wanted it. And when I'm happy with it, I push it all down. Now after all that is dried, I'm using a Fude ball pen to draw a little heart. And I didn't really like that the words were so faint in this case since this was my main quote. So I'm using a Posca pen, paint pen in white to trace over all of the letters so that they're a little bit bolder. could have left it as it is, but I just think that since this is the main quote, it's it just made sense to have it be a little bit bolder. And because the mask has so much white on it, it also helped balance that out so it wasn't just one stark thing that was white. So I'm not really being very careful doing this. I'm just kind of getting a rough outline and then filling it in. If it doesn't perfectly match the letters from before, I, I don't really care. Just roughly tracing it. Now some of you are probably pulling out your hair thinking, oh my goodness, this is so tedious. But for me, this is really relaxing. I enjoy tracing and doodling things, so I always like to do those little extra details that I think add pop to my page. So to me, this was a no-brainer. Trace these letters, no big deal. But again, you could have just left it as is. Also, if you hadn't tinted it with paint, those words would have been perfectly white and visible. So I kind of ca caused my own problem with this, but I'm okay with it because I really like that the tissue is purple. And after I was staring at this page for a little bit, I decided one heart wasn't enough, so I drew two more. And then after staring at it a little longer, I decided it was too clean, so I took some black paint and watered it down. And now I'm going to add some splatters with a palette knife. You could also use a brush or whatever you have around, but this is what was closest to me, so this is what I used. And I have to, you can see some big drops and some really small drops, and that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm just going to keep going with this till I feel like I have enough. And now my page is done. I really, really love how this one turned out. I don't normally use gel plates to create a background like this, so it was something different for me. And I think the end result is awesome. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Have a wonderful day.